<coughs> let us start now so we have covered information systems yeah so far in the level six okay um, yeah so how was it i um management information systems, i have yeah. yeah i i can't i think i've submitted the assignment already for that um yeah, so overall, how did you find it? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it all came back to me. Um, it was just a case of, um, yeah, I've already submitted that. Yeah. It all came back to me. It was just a case of going over my old assignments, um, and just refreshing on it. But overall, yeah, it's fine. So it was more focused on, you know, kind of conventional uh, uh management information systems and a touch of strategic management information systems yeah yeah that's it yeah and uh, more on kind of strategy thing and competitive advantage and and few of the methods you know the other strategies portals methods and these things so uh, overall if we look at the level of uh, this uh, course so somehow you know if it was a kind of level four, then just definitions and in level five, uh, slightly um, uh, a little bit bigger stuff. And uh, in level six, a kind of extended, you know, stuffs and number of topics. Do you understand this? Yeah. Yeah. And similarly, so you got a little bit more experience uh, with, uh, uh, you know, one of the units of uh, level six so i hope you should be okay with the uh the criteria yeah and uh, what the what the awarding body is looking for yeah yeah and now we are yeah. going to start the database management systems and uh, obviously you know that uh, every time while in every unit yeah from the awarding bodies, there is a mix up, yeah. And uh, what we try to do is like a first column, I list out the assessment criteria, yeah. Then uh, in the middle, I write the indicative content, yeah. And then few comments, you know, yeah. here. Yeah, what I try to conclude is that uh, irrespective of, you know, the this assessment criteria, sometimes they match it and sometimes, you know, uh, they repeat it. But overall, the middle column, the indicative contents are the actual uh, syllabus. You understand this? You agree this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember that. Yeah, so the indicative content uh, is the, uh, you know, syllabus that I always try to look at. And automatically, these things, you know, are being covered into this. For this unit, uh, uh, I want to list out that what is the major into this uh, LO and the next LOs. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Database management systems and uh, MySQL and Oracle. So this unit is expecting you to learn the MySQL and Oracle, yeah. Data models, you have been studying since level four, level five, and you must be aware with the entity relationship diagrams and relationship diagrams. Only the, and the new thing is uh, hierarchical network and object-oriented or object-relational databases. So if you remember at some point uh, we discussed but uh, relational databases have got, uh, uh, you know, the form or the structure in the form of table, table in a sense, row and column, yeah. And uh, so everything is stored in the row, in table, you understand? Yeah, I tell you. However, in the hierarchical database, there is a kind of tree-like structure. Yes. Yeah. 
in object oriented database a kind of object oriented databases like uh, uh, you know everything is considered as an object any entity will be having the a kind of operations attributes and you know would be interlinked you have little yeah. idea yeah you can understand it yeah 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 so and then relational data structures like uh, attributes domain tuple and cardinality you understand the word cardinality um, a, the multiplicity like you know the relationships one to one one to many many to many oh yeah 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 i know exactly what you referring to yeah yeah and then a normalization in developing efficient data structures can you recognize any any uh, some of uh, the normalization concepts yeah there's um i remember this now vaguely there's different levels isn't there you start off with the basics and then you you move up through the levels and it gets it basically each time you tidy up the data yeah tidy up the data tidy up the data and unnecessary columns and uh, yeah those and uh, you make sure that there shouldn't be any dependencies in between the columns and if it is uh, there are more than two columns and one column is depend let's say a is depending on b and b is depending on c so kind of dependency should not be there yeah 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 then the modeling languages uh basically the there are two three three types of the commands basically data definition language data manipulation language and the th third one is also there so three of in the uh, three languages basically related in order to uh query the database system in order to play with the database system uh we use uh, you know the uh processing language basically it's a little bit you know uh, uh confusing you might be thinking about you know a kind of uml modeling language word you know what i mean yeah yeah but it's not the modeling language uh when you play with the data model yeah and you are not basically yeah. going to use any artifacts yeah or any you know the diagrams but you are directly using the uh, certain commands of the sql and even all commands you know are you know carried out through the sql but by looking at the if you are creating let's say a table if you are deleting a table yeah then it's a different type of the language like a data definition language if it is a manipulative language then you are using like a in retrieving the data makes sense yeah yeah so it's a one of the uh, you know a kind of idea that how you would be interacting or processing the commands yeah that comes under the modeling uh like a data model language so don't confuse with the modeling you would not be uh, basically uh, uh, learning any diagrams which are already you know discussed in let's say in data models up here yeah yeah and uh, then is a small topic you know only we need to know which commands are ddl which commands are dml that's it Yeah. Then, then the next topic is the transaction and concurrency in the databases. Like we discussed, you know, earlier that uh, concurrent access is, let's say, at the time, thousand people are trying to access a particular website. Yeah, for example, Boots. So when it comes to the okay, database yeah. server, yeah, then obviously the database server cannot handle the uh more than 1000 connections at one time because every time the customers would be pulling up trying to retrieve the data uh, the data from the uh 
the stock and uh, the database of the stock yeah so yeah what we are trying to do this is basically happening at the middle tier of the application yeah so do you okay, remember yeah. tiers of the application in uh, enterprise enterprise applications um yeah vaguely yeah so what happens the front end the first tier is the user tier possibly the users could be responded let's say uh, for example if we start from the back end the back end is a database let's say uh, oracle or uh, the uh, mysql or sql server or any of the other you know in the uh, commercial database then it needs to be connected with an application mostly yeah the databases are not accessed directly by the end user do you agree yeah so every database is supposed to be connected with the uh, application yeah application server and then the application server has to uh, give the accessibility to the users yeah so they will be giving uh, they would be creating a communication of the user with the databases via the middle tier yeah kind of like a man in the middle yeah yeah so the man in the middle for example so that is basically called the three tier applications yeah okay yeah okay and uh, there is also the fourth tier application as well like a business logic yeah so the business logic would can also stay at the somewhere uh, in the middle tier but it ha it would have a kind of separate database or uh, uh, maybe the uh, instructions and uh, but the fourth is the middle tier let's say if we we are not going into the further detail so normal conventional uh, three tier architecture has got uh, uh, you know three tiers one is a front end front end or the user end the user end end can be let's say the web browser we are using and the uh, maybe it could be any form based application may be used into the stores in the for example if we take the example of the boots and uh, uh, possibly the at the middle tier maybe the supply chain management uh, is working there we cannot see the supply chain management of the boots yeah but the yeah. uh, the business logic by the admins by the owners by the managers they can easily you know access the uh, you know the database as well as the uh, number of users and number on the the demand of the supply of the items you understand this yeah okay and then <clears throat> uh when it comes to uh, accessing the database yeah database for number of let's say 1000 people at one time then the capability of the possibly the database let's say it can allow 1000 concurrent accesses to the database okay yeah 1000 concurrent yeah. access to the databases but when if it would in, uh, increase the limit then there can be two possibilities one possibility is that uh, 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 if you uh, if you would have uh, you know if you remember the stress testing in the somewhere in the software engineering or other you know units yes. uh, the stress testing is let's say allow the computer to get stressed for maximum limit 
are there's a one possibility then in that possibility the maximum allowed load let's say it could uh, compromise the efficiency of the server that's a one scenario and the other scenario is that maybe the server would deny any uh, you know uh, any number of uh, uh, more than the thousand rookies do you agree yeah yeah okay yeah. so definitely either the server can server would deny so the best optimal thing would be that at the middle tire yeah the yeah. middle tire server let's say the apache or any iis server or application server where we create our uh, dynamic web pages if you remember that uh, in the web based development uh, we have been discussing that uh, the static pages just are loaded from the directory of the server however the dynamic web servers they they are responded they respond to the users dynamically they have a capability yeah they have a capability to uh, generate the dynamic content for example uh, our shopping cart is a kind of dynamic thing yeah a dynamic yeah, okay. yeah. every user has got a session yeah like for example i have put four items in my basket then you know uh, your basket will have uh, five or seven and it would not be mixing up yeah yeah so it is because of the session management and uh, what happens the one thing is the concurrent access is that the database and the middle tier should be obeying the policy of concurrency okay yeah yeah for example if the boots wants to implement only let's say the 1000 uh, users to be connected with the database i mean at at one time only 1000 people can can do online shopping then that would be done via the concurrency right okay yeah yeah then the transaction management is for example if boots said uh, boots uh, has let's say 500 bottles of uh, you know uh vitamin c 500 bottles of vitamin c yeah then what would happen whosoever let's say as uh, uh, added vitamin c uh, let's say 500 yeah let's say 50 users 50 users they added uh uh vitamin c bottles each user added 10 bottles then uh, uh, you know the uh, how many would be the uh, you know they can add if, if it is a 500 and one person is adding let's say uh, let okay let's say there are 10 uh, there are 1000 bottles okay and 10 users okay and each user is adding 100 bottles of vitamin c then what should happen it well, basically it will it will take off the amount each time won't it so yeah. it, it won't let them um, it will only when but basically when all those 10 users have mm-hmm. added it it should say to the next user there's no more available exactly yeah so the yeah. other user says uh, you know that is it's not available the transaction was a kind of uh, uh, you know a temporary on the hold yeah it was the yeah. responsibility of uh, the server 
to show and lock that particular stock yeah yeah to temporarily lock that particular stock if the thousand of the items were you know picked up but it was not committed yeah okay but if, if it was not committed then it means uh, in two possibilities for example if so when somebody click uh, update the quantity or the delete from the you know basket yeah then roll back would have worked what yeah of course yeah roll back so the roll back and the commit are two keywords used in databases Okay. okay. Yeah. And, uh, so that's basically the transaction management. Yeah. Yeah. And the concurrent access is basically created, uh, or you know, uh, by implemented using uh, tokens. Yeah. For okay. Yeah. For example, within the server, and. Uh, there are 100 tokens created yeah then if each token is let's say occupied yeah let's say uh, uh, sorry i mean uh, if there are uh, 1000 tokens in the server the database then the 1000 times the token is taken it means there would not be any free token available then the concurrent access would be denied yeah. yeah okay so that is the yeah. mechanism behind the concurrency and transaction management yeah so in the transaction management you mean you uh, create the transactions temporarily and uh, let's say until it is uh, commit or rollback so rollback would be divided doing the reverse processes and the concurrent access a kind of tokens would have been used yeah Okay, yeah, that Good. makes sense, yeah. So, do you think that within just, you know, a five-minute talk, basically we have covered a kind of two chapters here? Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. And then the next is you talk about the open source and vendor-specific platforms of the databases. Okay, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. I believe you must be aware that what is the vendor specific and the open source. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, uh, MySQL, yeah, is a open source as a free database, uh, you know, and uh, the vendor specific like uh, Microsoft SQL Server, the Oracle, and they are the vendors. Yeah. So now, yeah, right, yeah. what we will be discussing today. Uh, superficially basically uh like if i would have tried to select the number of slides yeah and you try to minimize the number of slides at the minimum then it would not have been possible actually to cut every slide yeah. and thing into uh, into let's say in one hour session but uh, as you know that at the level of level six i mean in this level uh, but I have been trying to include more and more stuff, maybe in the parts, so that, uh, you know, as a, re as a learner, yeah, you should have uh, more stuff and uh, more readable stuff, you know, uh, after the session is de delivered, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So, uh, what we will be targeting today is, Now, how how we will we can you know uh, go through the MySQL and uh, Oracle? Uh, obviously, we need uh, more time to discuss on this. 
but I have tried to find a very good useful, you know, websites like a mysqltutorial.org and oraclelutorial.com. Yeah, and uh, you can go through these two websites for uh, MySQL and Oracle and uh, let's see that at what level the assignment is asking to uh, include the stem from these two different databases. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, fine, yeah. And even this is not only the limited one, uh, but the, any book, uh, good book can also be referred. Yeah. And then we'll be going through quickly <laughs> the uh, chapter two and three and uh, 20 and 21 today. And uh, vendor specific, uh, let's say, uh, maybe, you know, let us go through these website first and uh, then we'll be going through. Like MySQL tutorial, then getting started with basic SQL tutorial, stored procedures, triggers, and uh, tips to and uh, even try it. The queries are there, offices, implies tables are there. It's a much more there basically on this. Like a W3 schools. Uh, used to teach, uh, you know, many topics, HTML, XML, but I, what I have seen here that this is a kind of, you know, a very good, helpful tool with, and as much as you can uh, try this and uh, you will be, you know, okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I like that. That's okay. Yeah. Have you seen this website earlier before? No, I've never seen these websites before. So, and for this Oracle, seems I think it's a kind of similar uh, writer or company, and same they have got uh, uh, these topics and uh, what what are the functions in the Oracle, and uh, maybe advanced topics, and uh, creating a view and administration. What I believe you should be able to learn more about the architectures, commands, and user privileges, because in the in Oracle, uh, mostly you administer it. Yeah? Yeah. May you manage table space and other things. The database uh, administrators, basically, their job is to uh, create as well as uh, administer, yeah? Yeah, okay. Then, uh, one of the two good sources here thirty most popular database management system softwares like uh, they have listed here and uh, more details about their you know owners and whether they are commercial or not and uh, it's a commercial tool terra data it is and here's another link which has given basically Access Jet MCS and MSD mic from Microsoft and uh, it's a vendor like uh, you know the DB2 is from IBM and uh, it's a okay. relational type, yeah. And uh, there would be keywords here like R is a relational one, X is an extended relational one. O R is the object relational one. O O is the object oriented. This is a network one, hierarchical one. Yeah. So, for example, yeah. MySQL is a freeware. It's a relational one and open source. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I think this is a very good uh, listing. Yeah. 
and uh, if for example <coughs> if we wanted to assess ourselves that uh, how many vendors exist there how many open source exist there what kind of data models they use yeah or if i quickly uh, ask you that you know which are the object oriented base uh, uh, you know databases then easily yes me object store object db and uh, poet object and version these are object oriented based you know models of the databases isn't it okay yeah i get that yeah that's quite a good uh, table that. Yeah. yeah and if we quickly go over there then we can go through the type of the relational databases then hierarchical one network one object oriented object relational databases and uh, uh, very quickly you know we can get the documentation from them and uh, can you know study very easily this these isn't it yeah it is yeah so uh, these resources for the uh, you know open source and vendor specific databases and uh, mysql and oracle the links and uh, chapter 2 3 and 20 and 21 so let us have a look on the chapter 2 uh, yes one more thing uh, chapter 2 i am basically referring to the book which is uh, sorry the fundamentals of database systems yeah by El Masri yeah, and Nawati, seventh edition. Okay, yeah. So <clears throat> that would be available in the soft copy and uh, the PPT slides as well. And uh, you can further refer this uh, book. And I believe this is one of the recommended book as well. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, let me double confirm. Yes, this one is a recommended one. It's a 2011 uh, version, but I would be referring, uh, you know, the uh, seventh edition. Yeah and the ppt slides of the seventh seventh edition as well yeah okay yeah yeah so chapter two data models we discussed uh, uh, like you know they are used to create the structure of the data like uh, entities and uh, records tables relationships you understand this yeah then the levels of the database is like a conceptual level physical one you understand this yeah it's so all of this is coming back to me now yeah like we have been you know studying an schema description of a database when you write a schema then basically you write uh, let's say table and columns and tuples isn't it mm. yeah and uh, if you look at the now this is a kind of conventional you know a database schemas when we say course student table and then creating the relationships and uh, conceptual level so i think th th these 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 this chapter is that purely you know uh the level four level five stuff isn't it yeah it is yeah definitely and then, like i said that the ddl is the data manipulation languages you use sql and uh, when you it is comes to the dml then you are basically uh, uh having commands to in uh, 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 physically store the data yeah yeah so uh, manipulation is at the end of the user but when you trying to 
create a database, delete database, then you are trying to do the you know data uh, definition languages, yeah, and then yeah, uh, okay. yeah. Then uh, interfaces are there. Uh, data dictionaries and tools basically like we discussed uh, the tires of the application uh, from the example of uh, you know the boots yeah and uh, the same yeah. concept is discussed here that somewhere the database server would be there the web server would be there they would have you know kind of applications at their own tires yeah mm -hmm. So is it okay, like, you know, the DBS server would be, let's say, the backend server and the client would be the, uh, you know, uh, web and the ODBC would be connecting with the uh, database server and uh, the business logic or, you know, the medium and the middle tire, middle tire, tire, yeah? Yeah, so okay. ODBC, yeah. yeah? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So, so that's basically the, and then somehow the uh, the history of data models, like a network data model, and then uh, hierarchical data model, and yeah. So you understand from this that uh, if it's a particular kind of data model, then we can easily look at the more detail. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, that book is that available on um, the Moogle? You will have this. Yeah, I'm not sure that yeah, whether brilliant. we will be able to upload it or not, but you will have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry. And uh, so chapter two is here. And uh, like I said, you know, when we discussed early uh, earlier in the start of the session without going into the chapters and these things you know we already created a ground and it would be easy now to go through these chapters and uh, get the things done you know in detail isn't it yeah that's it yeah yeah i'm be fine with this, with this one yeah and then let's yeah. go to the chapter three Data modeling using uh, ER entity relationship diagrams. So you must remember, uh, you know, how we use simple uh, entity. Yeah, and then, I remember doing that with all the symbols and stuff. Yeah, symbols and the stuff. And the, only the uh, new thing in this chapter three is basically using UML for additional kind of diagrams for uh, entities. Yeah. What? Okay. Like, uh, if we if you come here, in yeah, two point two. Using standard modeling languages, UML notification to document logical data requirements. So. It's not only the uh, entity relationship diagrams, the conventional diagrams, uh, the relational based, uh, uh, you know, modeling, but UML can also be used as a data modeling language. So here is basically the proper, uh, you know, topic that we would uh, try to cover in addition to this data modeling here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so half of the chapter from chapter three, yeah, which which is related here from you know the three point eight topic that is related in uh, the uh, LO two, yeah, yeah, and then here you know it says use the proper norm normalization here in one point one, and again you know it says. Uh, apply data modeling techniques to refine logical data requirements and normalize. So actual topic is in level uh, the LO2 basically from uh, you know the normal form one two three and bias code normal form is a fourth normal form. Yeah. Yeah. 
so that we will be discussing yeah. in the next hello which is from the chapter 14 and 15 yeah okay yeah yeah so until chapter yeah. until the half of the chapter 3 that's based on the entity relationship diagrams yeah and uh, you can go through the further notation on the, this chapter 3 as well which is the uml based diagrams that's the hello to yeah but at least give it a repetition until there and then uh, chapter 20 is transaction processing so the, after the database terms then read and write operations yeah like uh, if you recall uh, the word words i was using rollback and commit yeah yeah so a committed transaction is permanently store, stored aborted one is not affecting the database and uh, there are there could be four other types as well the failures ones yeah because of the computer failure or system error or local errors as well yeah and uh, if it was yeah. not done properly then uh, furthermore the concurrency control enforcement disk failure anything else yeah so what would have been done that yeah. would have been done basically uh, rollback via rollback yeah the transaction was started either it was done read or write and uh, whether successful or not then transaction had to be let's say uh either committed or roll back yeah yeah so that's basically the whole chapter on this transaction makes sense okay yeah yeah, yeah. and the idea is easily behind obviously we have a limited time to cover everything but i hope that uh, you should be able to understand from the slides from the book and uh, not necessarily you know that uh, you go into each and every detail and you know the the diagram uh, i mean the uh, complex examples but any simpler examples would be good enough to study and include in the assignment isn't it yeah that's fine yeah yeah so uh, this was the transaction processing and uh, concurrent accesses yeah so like i said you know the concurrent accessing is done by locking the tokens yeah yeah, yeah. so there are certain locks given on the tokens lock one lock two if someone is unlocking and then you know uh, this looping basically allows and manages uh, on the uh, the trans the concurrency basically the concurrent access for example uh read read lock write lock unlock yeah so tokens are being you know uh, yeah. in programming in programmatically uh if somebody took the lock on let's say particular token then they are waiting whether it's unlocked or not so continuous loops would be checking locking unlocking operations you know in a two mode operation and in this way everyone would have been entertaining entertained basically and the tables would would have been generated uh, you know programmatically within the uh, you know uh, at uh, uh, middle tire basically yeah yeah of course, yeah. yeah yeah obviously middle tire would be managing this uh, uh, locking unlocking and deadlock and the starvation is basically deadlock is like a it may for example if it is better to make a queue before it gets deadlock isn't it yeah of course it is yeah yeah so that's why you know instead of uh, allowing uh, you know more number of requests to the database server or particular concurrent access then certain mechanism is uh, you know uh, introduced in order to avoid the de deadlock and then time spent are gi given 
like you know they are giving a kind of time spent on the boots and uh, so it it is working in this mechanism yeah and, yeah okay yeah yeah few more concepts validation and uh, uh, you know little bit more but it really depends that uh, uh, you know what the assignment is asking for but the idea is behind it did you ever study this uh, uh, concurrency and uh, transaction management before uh no i don't think i have um no i've only done what was in level 4 and 5 and 5 and uh, yeah i mean uh even if we, you, uh, you know, I mean, without looking at these slides, yeah, and uh, the idea I gave you about the concurrent access and, uh, you know, the transaction management, and by looking at these slides, this one and the previous one, do you understand that uh, the idea is very clear to you and you can un easily understand that what's going on? Yeah, yeah, I'll be, be able to work that out. Those, um, those slides there are they available yeah yeah i will i will you know uh make sure that uh, either this may be sent to you by email but definitely you will uh, you know you will receive it yeah brilliant okay yeah that's great yeah. so yeah uh anything else we are on the time and we covered uh you know a little but we covered a lot isn't it yeah yeah no that's that's good i liked it yeah i mean from the uh you know perspective the idea idea is a main thing isn't it yeah yeah it is yeah that's it yeah so once we have the clear idea about anything then we can easily jump and you know uh, swim into it but we don't know whether we are swimming into the pool or we are swimming into the ocean and then you know you would never know that what you need to do isn't it yeah that's it yeah i, I get what you're saying yeah yeah okay good so you try it i will you will get it uh, either via email and i will manage you know this to be uh with you uh you know tonight and uh wish you all the best with this and take care extra uh, for your you know especially in this difficult time and see you hopefully next week Monday. yeah yeah see you next week bye. thanks all right thank you bye